Hello, my name is Will Carmack and I've animated some ancient, historic, and iconic photographs for um, Johnny Harris, along with other type of documentary jobs. And I'm gonna be showing you all of my tricks to animate a photo in After Effects and make it look historic and old. And before we jump into this incredible tutorial, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. So obviously the place that we wanna start is Photoshop. So you can see here, we have this old picture of these dudes in war. So you can see here, I've like cut tons of pieces of this image out. Like I've cut this dude out. I've cut this hay bale, this entire stack out. And this is the foundation of every good photo animation is that you have to get as much pieces as possible that you would want to move in 3D space. And so now if we hop into After Effects, I've already built this up in 3D space. And so you can see what I've done here is I've cut out this cannon, I've cut out this hay bale, I've cut out this man and everything in the background. So here's my best and favorite trick when it comes to animating a camera in After Effects. If we come up to Layer, New and Null Object, we can link the camera to the null object. I personally do not like animating uh, camera movement on the camera layer. So I like to animate the camera movement from a null object. And we've got to make sure that we turn our null object 3D. And if you hit Y, you can move the anchor point of this null object to um, behind the camera. So it just makes more sense when you're animating. So to begin, what I'll do is I'll hit a position keyframe right here where we're like close to the man. Maybe I'll bring the camera down a little bit, or actually, you know what? I'll bring it up high like this. And we go over like four seconds and I'll animate the camera to come down and reveal our man like like so. Of course, we'll grab these two keyframes and easy ease them. And if you go into your curves graph for like an intro shot like this, I'll bring the top of the curve graph like this and then I will slow it down. Actually, I'll make the top of this speed graph really fast and bring in the back a little tighter. And so if you start the clip from right here, you get this beautiful pan down to your image. If you hit Shift, Control, Alt, Y, it will just automatically add another null object and I like every single camera movement to be on a different null object so I will now turn this null object 3d and I will grab the anchor point of it move it behind the camera and I'll grab the pick whip from null 2 and put it on null 3 because now if I create a position keyframe right here like before this first null camera movement ends I'll easy ease it and then I will animate it to move back like this before our first camera movement even ends, the second one is gonna start. So it looks like the camera is never stopping. And I'll grab the curve graph and I will ease in that second shot and I'll give it more of like an S curve in the sense that it will start slow, get fast and then end slow. So let's see what that looks like. We come down, then we slowly move out. See, that looks incredible. And now for my first trick to kind of make this look a little more old school. So if you click on your camera layer, you'll see this top one under transform is called point of interest. If we alt click on this and we type in wiggle one comma 60, what this is gonna do is it's gonna add a wiggle effect to the point of interest. And so now everything is moving a little. Oh, it's really subtle. So actually let me make it wiggle to 120. This might be a little too crazy. Oh gosh. Yeah, do you see that? Now the camera is going crazy. Maybe I'll try 190. Ooh, I like that. I'll even make that a little crazier. One, 150. Ooh, yes. Do you see this? So now our camera animation kind of has this heavy weight to it. Like it's like a jittery old camera. And so now one of my favorite little techniques to make something like an animated photo look old school, is if you go to Google and you type in dust and scratches, you'll be able to find some images that you can download that look like this. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna isolate all these little white scratches from this black background and we're gonna turn them into set pieces in our in our video. So I'll bring a clip like this into After Effects and the way we're gonna just isolate these dust scratches, I'll solo this layer in our effects and presets, I'm gonna type in extract, which this plugin, if you crank the end of this black part here, really quickly, I'm gonna make a red solid so you can see what I'm doing. So if you see here, if you put extract on a clip like this, you can just isolate these pieces like this. And so now this layer is simply just the dust and scratches. So we can unsolo our layer, and what we can do is turn this dust and scratches into a 3D layer. So you can kind of see here what we're doing. So I'll grab this dust and scratches and maybe move it super close to the camera. And I'll scale down the dust and scratches. 
and I'll keep duplicating these scratches and moving them where I think they would be like best fit inside the animation. So now as you can see, as we pan down, we kind of pass through all these like floating artifacts inside the actual photo. So if we watch this back, you can see like as we're flying through the photo, we're like passing all these different little dust scratches inside the image. And this is one of those things where you can keep duplicating and scaling up or scaling down. And it's just nice if you're animating like an old photo to have all these little floating artifacts. So now my next trick is really simple. If we pre-compose everything, name it old photo. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to layer, new and solid, and we're gonna make black solid. And we're actually gonna scale it up a bunch like this. And if we grab the rounded rectangle tool, we will create a little border with a mask and we'll hit M, set it to subtract. So we have this cool border like this. And what we're gonna do in our effects and presets, if we type in roughen edges, you can see what's happening here is that now our little border has these rough edges that you can play around with, with um, the roughen edges effect. And the reason we made it so big is if we hit P to drop down the position on this black solid and hit Alt, we can type in wiggle 250. See what that looks like. And so now our border is gonna move Okay, this is too crazy. So I'll maybe animate it to be wiggle 10, five. That's cool. So now our border is wiggling. It kind of replicates that look when like uh, you're watching back an old film and it's like <laughs> What I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to make my border a little smaller on the edges here. Yeah, that looks, that looks really nice. And then if we click on our old photo layer, uh, another thing that I like to increase the depth and the old vibe of it is you can give it a vignette. So under stylize or CC vignette, move that to the middle. You can kind of crank the amount up so like the edges are really dark. You can make the angle of view wide or small. So you almost like have a spotlight on it. Now our photo is increasing in depth. It has a border. It's filled with all these old little artifacts. And before our next thing, there's one more little trick. If we come up to layer and create an adjustment layer and let's put the curves effect on this and we'll make it dark, kind of like this. We're gonna do something similar to a vignette where we're gonna grab like our lips tool and then do something like this make the circle as big as the frame and then hit subtract and then we'll feather out the edges so we have these nice super dark edges by the end of it and what we're actually gonna do with this if we hit T to show the opacity we'll alt click on the opacity stopwatch and type in a wiggle like 2050 so it's gonna wiggle 20 times with the effect of 20. Oh God, that's way too much. I'll do 20, 15. And so now if you look at the edges of our parallax are flickering like an old film would. And this flickering effect is just really nice. It kind of adds to like the artificial jank of like an old photo. And the nice final touch that will add to this is we'll pre-compose everything. And now on this last pre-composed layer and our effects and presets, we'll type in posterized time or posterized time. I no clue which one it is. And what this does is it lets you choose a frame rate in which this is displayed. And so I will change the frame rate to 12. And so now this photo animation is gonna be playing back at 12 frames per second. And much like an old eight millimeter film, it could only display something like 12 uh, frames per second. So this is just the final touch to give it that old school look that's really nice. And that ladies and gentlemen are all the little tricks I use to make an old photo animation in After Effects look old. I do a lot of documentary work where I animate photos. So I have actually lots of tutorials on how to create stylized parallax images like this. And if you guys have any questions about this process or any of my work, leave it in, a, in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram where a lot of this cool stuff is posted. And of course, I'd like to thank my incredible sponsor, Squarespace. From online stores and marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is your best option for making a website. If you want an incredibly customized and personalized website, well, you're in luck because with Squarespace's new design system, Squarespace blueprint, you'll be able to select from professionally curated templates. So you'll be able to pick a design that is good for your vibe or brand. And with their optimized SEO tools, you'll be able to get discovered way faster and way easier. And let's say you're a business person and you've got products you want to sell. And with Squarespace's flexible payments, you'll be able to accept every form of currency, Apple Pay, credit cards, 
PayPal. You'll even be able to use pay later features. So your online store can sell your goods and you'll be able to make it as convenient as possible for your customers. And lastly, if you don't wanna rely on just the professionally designed templates that Squarespace offers, Squarespace's Fluid Engine lets you edit and customize from your launching off point. So you can use one of these templates as your starting point, And then from there, use all of the incredible editing tools that Squarespace offers for you to make every page look exactly how you like. And everybody, the best part is I got you a discount code. So if you go to squarespace.com slash Will Carmack, you'll be able to get 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Squarespace. I hope you all check them out. And don't forget, where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day.